Hi everyone, I'm going to work you today through a uh, Unit 1 question from Topic 6, the radiation in stars. And this question starts off by asking us to describe, that's my key term, describe the main features of the spectrum of a star and state where they come from. So the first thing to remember is that stars are black bodies, so they emit a continuous um, spectrum. And that comes from the surface or photosphere of the star. And on top of that, we have a line absorption spectrum. Uh, from the elements in the star's atmosphere. So you might remember seeing something in class where you have a continuous spectrum and there are these little sort of missing gaps in that. Okay, so you get the hydrogen series, for example, in there. Uh, so sorry, that's star's atmosphere. Okay, so uh, that first question is all recall. So here I want to compare the two intensities. Now there's there's two ways of doing this. There's there's a slightly longer way where you, you calculate the intensity uh, for Sirius and then you calculate the intensity for Vega and then you, you divide them by each other. Or you, you can use some, some mathematical trickery, if you like, to, to get straight to the point. So um, in this one, you, you need to remember, and this is the tricky thing, this one's not on the data sheet, that the intensity of radiation is equal to the luminosity of the star divided by 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of the dis well, the distance between the star in question and the observer here on Earth. So if I uh, consider the intensity of Sirius over the intensity of Vega, that's going to be equal to um, this luminosity here, which is 9.7 times 10 to the 27 over... Um, the 4 pi um, 8.1 times 10 to the 16. So that's from up there. So that's my intensity for Sirius. And that's all going to be over 1.5 times 10 to the 28 over 4 pi. From there, 2.4 times 10 to the 17. Okay, so again, I'm going to chuck those into brackets. Now, a little bit of mathematical trickery means I can cancel those things out. This will come up to here, so it's going to become 9.7 times 10 to the 27 times 2.4 times 10 to the 17, all over... Um, my next one is 1 1.5 times 10 to the 28 times 8.1 times... 10 to the 16. So this is just uh, the fractional work that you might have learned in maths, which is great. And then if you then calculate what those values are, you should get... Uh, sorry, I've forgotten to square my r's. This is one of my favourite mistakes here, is squaring these r's here. So they need squaring in there. That all goes into your calculator, and it should give you 1.18 times 10 to the minus 7 for the intensity of Sirius and the intensity of Vega is 2.07 times 10 to the minus 8. So when you actually complete that calculation, you end up with 5.7. Okay, and that's a ratio, so there's going to be no unit on there at all. Okay. This question looks uh, really simple, the, the next part. It uh, looks really simple at first glances, but it actually relies on us having been able to do the earlier part of the question. So... Uh, it wants us to sketch the expected black body curve for Vega on the same axis. Now, we've just worked out here that on Earth, so here it says the relative spectral intensity, that's what they want on this side, the relative spectral intensity reaching Earth. And that's what we've just spent time doing. It doesn't want the actual luminosity. It wants us to use this answer that we've just found out down here. So we've just worked out that um, Sirius is... Sorry, the Vega is 5.7 times less than Sirius. So there's no coincidence, I'm sure, that when they drew this, they wrote the relative intensity here is 5.7. So for our new curve that we're drawing on here for Vega, it's got to go through there. So they've told us that they're the same surface temperature, so their peak wavelength will be the same. And because 
um, because it's lower, it will have to be lower everywhere. So my curve will be underneath the curve for uh, Sirius as I go along here. So it's got to be kind of the right shape and it's got to go all the way along. As long as it's lower, we've satisfied that part there. So remember, this is about the ratio because this is the relative intensity here. So what looked like quite a nice question at first relied on us using our previous answer, making it that touch trickier. Now, this last bit down here is uh, four marks. So this is, is going to be a, a good skill base here. So they want us to use Stefan's law for this. So they want us to do P equals A, uh, Stefan's constant, T to the four. And we're going to rearrange that because we're after temperature. Bear with me, we're going to have to do an extra thing afterwards. So uh, if you do the rearrangement, you'll discover that T is equal to the fourth root of P over A and Stefan's constant. So if we keep solving that out, we should get that uh, the power output is, uh, that will be the luminosity of the star there. So that's going to be five, sorry, no it's not. That will be nine point seven times 10 to the 27. And then we need that over the 5.67 times 10 to the minus eight, which is Stefan's constant, times the area, which is up here in the question, which is 1.8 times 10 to the 19. Okay, so all that goes into brackets, and then there's a magic button on your calculator that will do the fourth root for you, and that will give you temperature equal to 9.9 .9 times 10 to the three Kelvin. Okay. And then we're going to need to do uh, Wine's Law to this, and that's where uh, lambda peak is equal to, I've done my lambda backwards, my lambda peak is equal to uh, 2.9, that's Wine's constant, times 10 to the minus 3, over this number we've just generated from down here, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 3, and that's going to equal... 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And you can run that quick check that I encourage you to do, which is that's 290 nanometers, which is about the, the range we're talking about for visible sort of light. It's a bit short. It's probably in the ultraviolet, okay? So there's how you solve your way through that one. There were two steps to that, and that's what makes this question particularly tricky. You might have noticed early on that this is question seven, so it's right at the end of your exam paper. It, it's where the hardest questions are saved for. Okay, and the last part of this question here is all about some multi-wavelength astronomy. Um, so after we've had a, a bit of fun looking at the pretty pictures, describe how these developments in observational astronomy advance the study of whirlpool galaxies. So we need to say something about multi-wavelengths here. So um, um, by using astronomy, um, we can see additional uh, structures and information compared to um, uh, compared to a visible only image and you might want to mention some extra things like um, e.g we can see um, quasars, for example, emitting X-rays. Okay, so this one is a bit of AO1 and also a bit of using your, your understanding of the scientific process. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that's been useful for you.